Carolyn moved to Calgary to swim. I can't remember what year she moved to Calgary to swim. And so we swam together on the same team for a number of years. And then Carolyn was the alternate in um, LA for Kelly, Chris and Sharon Hambrick. And then about a, a month or so before the Olympics, a great announcement that solo was in. So Carolyn was a top solo at that time and swam solo in, in 84. And then when she came back, her and I paired up together as a pair. Um, to go to the first World cha Championships in Indianapolis in 1985. Oh, I wanted to. I wanted to get to that Olympic Games again. I wanted to win an Olympic gold medal. I mean, that's really my goal was to win an Olympic gold medal. So we swam together 85, 86, 87. So went to all the World Championships leading up to Seoul in 88. We had won the World Championships three years in a row, and we were the top two. Um, well, Carolyn was a top figure swimmer in the country too. I always ranked around second or third, but the so that's half of the mark. Arc, right and then the chemistry between us was the other half and our, our record of working together so well. Go to the World Championships is amazing, to win the World Championships is amazing but the Olympics is to be there with all the best athletes in the entire world with all the different sports that there are there's I mean no greater honor than to be able to represent your country. Michelle was great we got along very well um, but we had to get into the same groove because I was very hyper and she was very relaxed. I thought she was just a blast. She was so funny and um, worked really hard but also knew how to have a lot of fun at the same time. And uh, I, I, we had a lot of fun working together. It was t challenging at times because we are so different. And But we both had such a common goal that we'd work through any challenges to get there. We had our moments too. I remember once walking to practice at U of T and and she has her glasses on and we're both quiet and sometimes I, you know, I just finally turned to her and I said, you're getting on my nerves. I looked at her and I said, oh, well I'm glad you got that open and out in the air because we need to talk about this then. But it was great the fact she was so nonchalant, we had great communication. You really have to almost be able to finish the other person's sentence. You have to know how the other person thinks if you want to be really in synchronization with one another. So we spent a lot of time together and of course became very close, I mean almost like sisters. One of the really key parts too was having Karen Larson was our alternate and she trained with us and, and made that a great journey as well. Like She worked so hard that last year as well with us, well all the years leading up, but to have her as our alternate leading into Seoul, it was a lot of fun working with her. She was a great swimmer. I remember doing our, our lengths, just swimming lengths, and she was I think even faster than us and she would push us, uh, so we were always looking over our shoulder. The training with months prior and even the whole year prior was we were training uh, probably six to eight hours a day at that point and so it was all the dry land training and very 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 specific too and and uh, we would do a lot of simulations. The preparation for the duet was more work because you have two people instead of one and you have to take their strengths and their weaknesses into play and you have to it's a melting pot now and you have to bring it so it works together um, and I spun differently than Michelle. So I spun to the right, she's, I can't remember which way it was, but we spun differently. So it'd be like taking someone who writes with their right hand and putting them with someone who writes with their left hand. And I had to spin her way. I remember Black Wednesdays where we'd have to do our routine through three times in a row with a weight belt on and a minute and a half rest in between. And Carolyn and I's opening sequence was almost a minute under the water. Michelle was passing out three times a week and it was terrifying. I admired her for how far she was pushing herself. I have to say that was probably my least favorite part of the training <laughs> was the days like that. After winning world championship, how do you get better than the best in the world, right? And it's just those little things every day. No two practices were ever, ever the same. Never. And when you reached a certain level, it was like, okay, now keep it there, and then how do you improve it from there? That was, it was so tough, but it also really prepared us well because we knew you know, coming to the games, if we could do it through three times in a row with a minute and a half rest in between and get our heart rate down to where it needed to be and, and uh, uh, that we would be ready at the Olympics because you only had to do it once. But I remember Debbie, she would push us and we'd have to do our routine like three times in a row with very little break and it was killer. It was, it was like a dark cloud every single Wednesday. It was hard. She was pushing us to the brink and you have to push yourself so hard because if on the day of the Olympic Games you are feeling tired, oh well, you have to go compete. So if you're feeling sick, oh well, you've got to compete. 
So that's how she was testing our mental toughness. We went to Seoul um, and we stood at the where the pool was going to be. It wasn't even built yet, and this was two years prior, or, or over a year prior. It wasn't even finished. There was a hole in the ground, and we stood in our starting position at the edge of this pool that was not yet finished, where the bleachers would be, and imagined what it would be like to be standing there in the Olympics. That was again the quadrennial plan that, Diane, uh, that Debbie had thought out so well and planned so well. Is she didn't want any surprises at all for us when we got to Seoul. When we got to Seoul, we had already planned that we were going to go outside of Seoul after the opening ceremony, so we got to participate in the opening ceremonies and all the excitement around that and energy of the Olympics. And then we didn't compete till the second week, so it was keeping our focus really strong. So we actually went to a little town called Ongyang, about two hours outside of Seoul, which I don't even think they knew the games were going on. So they dropped, well, first of all, we went two hours the wrong direction because we went to Anyang <laughs> instead of Ongyang. We went and trained in this beautiful 50-meter pool in this little town uh, they literally dropped us off and we were like okay remember to, to come and get us <laughs> you know <laughs> and this pool it was great because it was uh, we had it all to ourselves but there was no it wasn't heated it was freezing when we got back to Seoul it was neat because everyone was saying how cold the Olympic pool were and we're like oh this is fantastic <laughs> we also got to taste the culture of Korea and uh, the the beautiful people that they have and the little school children and we went in, we were the people were so hospitable taking us into their home we were doing things um, of getting our name out there so they they could cheer for us and it actually worked so when we got to Seoul Korea they actually knew our names and they were cheering for us for Canada which was uh, brilliant on Debbie's part they are so good that was one of the best times. I've seen them do that. I got into the village on time to watch Ben Johnson's race, which of course was Canada's first gold medal. And it was like a rocket went off in this building. Like the, the roof just went off when he won that gold. It was it was phenomenal feeling for Canada. And uh, the media is not allowed to be in the village. And I remember walking to the dining hall after and uh, a, a camera crew came up to me at that point and they said, did you hear what happened to Ben Johnson? I go, no, what happened? I had no idea. I thought, oh, you know, did he get hit by a car or what happened? From there became a lot of pressure for Carolyn and I. It was like the question was, does this put more pressure on you to bring back the gold for Canada? And I'm like, no, but if you keep asking us a hundred times a day, it might have some impact. You know, after the Ben Johnson ordeal, I, I don't think Michelle and I felt any pressure at all. Like, we were just, we were trained so well uh, just to focus on what we had to do. Just go out there and have fun, and have fun was really our phrase. Michelle and I would always say, let's just go have fun. I mean, that's, that's really what it comes down to. If you aren't having fun, then get out. You know, we had stayed ahead of them the whole three years leading up to the Olympics until a pre-Olympic meet when they beat us in the pre-Olympic meet. So we had gone back and changed one of the things in our routine. You know, like you're so close the whole way and you're almost there and it's like we had to go back to what makes us unique, what makes us different and what are our strengths. So we had changed our last piece of music to the can-can because -can, all the rest of it was Spartacus but we needed something really fast and strong that really showed off our, our height in the water. and. Our, or creative part of it. There was pressure. We were competing against identical twins. And that was very intimidating when you're competing against identical twins. The very first figure I went out on, I did start thinking about, oh my gosh, this is the Olympics. This is so big and it, it got overwhelming in just that, that moment. And after the morning, I was ranked fourth in figures and that was gonna pull us out of the medals if I didn't get my head together. We're a team and we're in it together. So I was never stressed if you know what Michelle was doing if she wasn't doing well or if she was struggling that didn't stress me out it's it is what it is and I mean all we can do is do our best let's face it we all have bad days and if it happens to be on the Olympic day oh well what can you do and so I remember going back to the village and I just wanted it to be a new day I wanted it to start over and go back and and, and beyond and when we got back in the afternoon the first figure was castle which was the highest degree of difficulty and one of the things that I did when I trained I took the things that I hated the most and I made them my favorite thing so castle was the hardest figure and I made that my favorite figure and I worked the hardest on it so when we got back in the afternoon I nailed it and so I came first in the castle which brought my mark back up. We didn't have a big lead over the Americans I mean we were 
it was like this. I mean, it was a toss of the coin as to who was going to win the gold medal going into the duet event. It was it was very different than the solo. So we were sweating bullets going into the duet. We we had no idea, but it made it exciting because we didn't know. We we knew we had to swim really good with very few errors if we were going to pull off uh, an Olympic gold medal. The Jays went out to swim, and in this holding room, there was a little two-way uh, window. It was like in the detective movies. We could see out to the competition pool, and no one could see us in there. I remember watching the Jays, and they had an amazing swim. And so, and then I watched their marks come up, and I had never done that before. I watched their marks, and they had four tens out of seven tens, and I'm like, holy, that's a lot of tens. They were good. They were very good, and they didn't make many mistakes. Being identical twins, they always looked perfect. So we knew not being identical twins and being two inches in difference and Michelle had legs like this, I mean, we, we knew we had our work cut out for us. There wasn't panic, but there was a silence. There was definitely a silence between both of us and we both knew that we could, that, you know, we could easily blow it here. And, but we always had this little thing before we go out. We'd, we'd squeeze each other's hand and we'd say, okay, let's have fun. You know, we'd have this thing that we did every single time and that, that just kind of calmed us down and just let's just go do our thing. We get out of the little holding room and then we go into this bigger holding room that's like a 50 meter pool and it's quiet there, totally quiet. And I'm jumping, I always jump to relax my nerves and was jumping a little more than normal and don't want Carolyn to know I'm nervous either, right? So we get to the double doors, the glass doors to go out and we do our shake and buzz and Debbie's standing right there and she's you know keeping us calm and, and all of a sudden I turned to her and I said what do we need to win as in marks right and I just saw this rash go up Debbie's neck and I went just kidding buzz shake I'm going my head's not where it needs to be I need to focus on what we're doing. Debbie would always get red 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 when she was nervous so and we could see that that she was crap in her pants Debbie <laughs> <laughs> she couldn't hide it at all, so it was kind of funny to see that in Debbie. And I remember the doors opening and them saying, Canada's Carolyn Waldo and Michelle Cameron, and we walked out, and um, just there were a ton of Canadian flags because we had been in Korea before, and the, the Koreans just loved our sport and loved the Canadians. And when we finished, Carolyn and I um, just stopped and gave each other a huge hug because neither of us had said it that we both knew we were retiring after the Olympics, but we didn't want to say we were done before we done. So at the end, giving that hug and just going, you know, like that was a really special moment. We were elated. I mean, it was, um, I have to say it was, it felt like more of an accomplishment in the duet than it did in the solo because the solo was kind of anticlimactic, but the duet felt like a real accomplishment because it was tough beating uh, identical twins from the U.S. and the fact that we beat identical twins was pretty awesome and our routine was very very difficult. I don't even remember seeing the marks come down and at the bottom it just said Canada number one. Beat them by a hair. It was so close but it made it, it exciting for the sport and that's what was nice is the fact that it wasn't just you know a walk in the park to win a gold medal um, and that's what I, I, I almost wanted to see that in the duet because it's, it's not good when it's anticlimactic. It was just like, wow, like it was so much training, so long, and in that moment, there. It was uh, amazing. And then to be able to, we walked around the pool, and because we, uh, awards was right away, we barely dried off and got our sweats on and walked around the corner and over the side of the pool was a, the hugest Canada flag draped. And then to see the Canadian flag go up and hear the Canadian anthem, I, I said to Caroline, I said, that's the best looking flag in the world. Oh my goodness, we were, uh, I was uh, weeping Waldo on the podium. It was, um, it, was, it was nice to experience that with somebody, with Michelle, after the four years that we put in. I remember the silence. In the in the limo or whatever, and um, it was kind of strange because it was it was almost like a feeling of what do we do now? Like we we were we're just Olympic gold medalists, crowned Olympic gold medalists, but what do we do? What do we do now? Where does life go from here? After we won, we go off to all the media interviews, and it's uh, um, 
and finish all the dope testing, which that was an experience in itself because it was so, so much security around it because of Ben Johnson. So it was like no one wanted to have any mistakes happen. And so we went to then all the interviews. It was probably six hours later. We went back to the village to change to go and meet our families finally. And I remember getting in the elevator in the village with uh, Carolyn, Karen Morrison, and myself. And in the van driving to the media interviews, it was so quiet you could heard a pin drop we got back to the village and we're in that elevator and the elevator door closed and we just looked at each other and we just started to scream and cry because it just finally hit us I think what made us the best in the duet event was our tenacity uh, not giving up uh, we worked so hard not to say that other athletes didn't work as hard as us um, I hate to say it too I think we had the best coach in the world Debbie knew what she was doing. I've never seen a coach like that. I don't know if we could have gotten to where we were. I know we couldn't have gotten to where we were without our coach, Debbie Muir. When I look at it, it signifies possibility. You know, I was saying how, you know, as a kid, failing my first level four times, and I look at that first level of swimming four times, and I look at that, and it signifies what we're capable of. It sing signifies possibility. The gold medal in duet really symbolized teamwork for me. I mean that's what teamwork is all about. Whether it's in the workforce, whether it's in sport, uh, whether it's at home in a relationship, is that you can have success. Um, you know, Matt, Michelle and I were two very different people and we ended up coming together with a lot of hard work and we made it work. And so to me that um, is a statement in general of life is that you know if you're having difficulties it takes a lot of hard work but you can make it work.